Hello everyone. Thanks so much for joining BioTeach again for this topic area. Hope you're enjoying the resources so far. So this video is looking at the AS level biology unit for biological molecules, specifically the theory for lipids. As an overview, you need to know that lipids are organic compounds, which means they're made up of carbons, hydrogens and oxygens. They're mostly non-polar, which means they have no overall charge. They're also hydrophobic, which means they do not readily dissolve in water or you could say that they repel water. You might understand this better if you imagine oil being mixed in water and the globules you see floating around and not quite dissolving in there. Lipids include fats, waxes, sterols, and phospholipids. The lipids you know of, such as oils and waxes, generally have a greasy consistency, but the sterols we talk about are things like steroid hormones, such as testosterone. Lipids have many very important biological functions. Firstly, we say they're a source of energy as they provide fuel for aerobic respiration. In fact, the key point to note here is that gram for gram, lipids contain twice as much energy than carbohydrates, and this is because they're their numerous bonds in the hydrocarbon chain. When a molecule is metabolized, the chemical energy is released. I mentioned phospholipids earlier too. These are key in forming what we call the phospholipid bilayer, which is essentially what makes up the majority of our cell membrane composition. Waxes and oils secreted onto the surfaces of plants provide waterproofing in plants and animals to stop water loss. Fat in animals acts as a shock absorber too. Organs such as kidneys can be prone to bumps and shocks and are cushioned with a nice layer of fat to protect them. Lipids are a source of metabolic water also. During respiration, stored lipids are metabolized for energy, producing water and carbon dioxide. And lastly, stored lipids provide insulation. Increased body fat levels in winter reduce heat losses in the environment. Apart from these main functions, you also need to know what lipids look like and how their structure relates to their function. As mentioned earlier, lipids are made up of carbons, hydrogens and oxygens. There are three main types you will need to learn about for the exam. They are triglycerides, which are composed of three fatty acids and a glycerol group, phospholipids, which is two fatty acids, a glycerol and a phosphate group, and steroids, which is made up of four fused rings. You may have also heard of the term fatty acids before. They are a major component of neutral fats and phospholipids. Most fatty acids consist of an even number of carbon atoms with hydrogen bound along the length of the chain. There is a carboxyl group or a COOH at one end that makes them acidic and they're generally classified as saturated or unsaturated. Saturated means there are no double bonds in the chain. It means that each carbon in the chain is saturated with hydrogen. Unsaturated means some carbon atoms are double bonded and not fully saturated with hydrogen. Sometimes you might hear of such terms as monounsaturated, which means that the chain only has one double bond, or you might even hear of polyunsaturated, which means there are multiple double bonds along the chain. I should also state that an easy way of being able to tell whether a fat is saturated is to check its state at room temperature. Anything that is solid at room temperature is saturated, so things like butter and lard. Unsaturated tend to be things like oils, which are liquid at room temperature. The reason for this is because the double bonds in the hydrocarbon chains causes a bend or a kink in the chain, which means that the chains do not pack closely together, hence creating something that is more in its liquid form. In this diagram here, you get an idea of what I mean by bends or kinks. The top fatty acid chain is a saturated one, as it only has single bonds in between the carbons, and the bottom one is an unsaturated one, and you can see how that causes a bend in the chain. Now, each of these fatty acids will be joined to a glycerol molecule by an ester bond to form a lipid molecule. So let's first talk about triglycerides. The clue is in the name. It is made up of one molecule of glycerol and three fatty acid chains. Triglycerides are an example of a neutral fat and are formed in a, when a condensation reaction occurs. Glycerol is an alcohol containing three carbons and you can see that on the top left hand corner of this screen where it's labelled up as glycerol. Each of these carbons is bonded to a hydroxyl group or an OH group as you can see from that diagram. For an exam, you would be required to know how to draw this molecule, so feel free to pause the video now and copy down the glycerol group. When the glycerol bonds with the fatty acid, the ester bond is formed and water is released. 
Three separate condensation reactions are involved as there are three fatty acid chains bonding with three OH groups. The process of forming an ester bond is known as esterification. In this diagram, you can see the formation and structure of the triglyceride. This diagram is shown on the bottom right of the screen. Please remember that this is a reversible reaction. We can initiate lipolysis or the breakdown of lipids. And to do this, we can hydrolyze the ester bonds to separate the fatty acids from the glycerol. It's really no different from the condensation hydrolysis reactions I talked about in my earlier videos. Phospholipids are similar in structure to a triglyceride, except that a phosphate group replaces one of the fatty acids attached to the glycerol. So a phospholipid contains of a glycerol group, two fatty acids and a phosphate group instead. The phosphate end is hydrophilic and the fatty acid is hydrophobic, so phospholipids naturally form bilayers and are a major part of our cell membranes. The fatty acids in phospholipids can be saturated or unsaturated. In fact, it's those with more unsaturated fatty acids that have more fluidity in their membrane because they're not closely packed together. We'll cover this more when we cover the membrane topic a little bit later. The images on the right show you the diagrammatical version of phospholipids. In diagrams like this, you cannot see the glycerol group drawn. In your exam, though, you would have to draw the glycerol group. Okay, so that's all I have for you on the theory of this particular topic. The next video will talk you through some of the examples of past paper questions, so you get an idea of how to answer those questions. Please look out for that. If you haven't already, please like, share and subscribe to my page. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below this video. I'll be posting up some videos on amino acids and proteins next. Thank you so much for watching. See you later. Bye for now.